Hello everyone. Welcome back to Linked Frequency. This is a practice project for PCB designer tutorial series and in this particular video we are going to learn about how to create a PCB for converting 12 volt DC into a 3.3 volt DC power supply design using Easy EDA. So we already discussed the product development cycle in our previous video and most of our tutorial related to PCB designing in Linked Frequency and I hope you have learned about them and using that same principle we are going to start with the black box analysis. First thing first we need an input connector which type of a connector is required is absolutely uh, discussed in our previous video that is all about we are using these kind of adapter a 12 volt DC adapter which is having a DB9 connector and similar to that we need an input connector so that we can take output from that SMPS to our PCB. Then we need an input filter which will filter out the unexpected noises or impulses coming from that SMPS circuit. Thereafter, we need a regulator circuit which is a linear voltage regulator at this point of time and it is essential to convert our high voltage DC into a regulated DC voltage that we are expecting right now, that is 3.3 volt. Then we need an output filter circuit which is essential to remove the unexpected impulses or noise that are generated by regulator IC by any means. And then we need an indicator circuit indicating this entire PCB is working. After all, we need an output connector so that we can access the output voltage from this PCB for any other application later the manufacturing. As we know, this particular black box analysis is a fundamental base design for the project. And we discussed all these four points in our previous tutorial. If, if you are watching this particular tutorial first time, then no worries. Do remember this black box analysis is a fundamental for any product development activity in ESDM industry. Second thing is it includes only functional representation blocks. For example, we need a regulator here. That's why I have mentioned a regulator. I have not mentioned any specific part number. That's why it is called black box. And then the arrow marks indicates the flow of electrons or flow of electric current from one box to another box or maybe the signal that is flowing from one point to another point. So make sure that you use these uh, arrow marks very properly. Thereafter, the black box are drawn based on the requirements of the project. As we said, we have a requirement of converting 12 volt DC into 3.3 volt DC. That's why this black box is created in such a way that it helps us to achieve that particular requirement. Now, after doing that, we need to go for morphological chart. As we know, we have uh, features on the column first column here and then uh, the first row indicates the options that we are available right now. We have two common options which are very popular in DIY segment wherein the other two options are very much common in industrial application design activity. Uh, that's why I have considered multiple options so that we can discuss which one is very much suitable for us to design at this point of time. First thing first, we are comparing the maximum current input voltage range and dropout voltage range or dropout voltage at the point and then design complexity and cost. As I already mentioned in our previous video, these are not only the features that we need to compare, but also you can compare another 5 to 10 features for a real time high scale project because the morphological chart helps you to understand which part to be selected very accurately suitable for your project. That's why make sure that you do it properly rather than just copying the things that we are showing on the screen right now. First of all, LM317 is the variable voltage regulator. That's why I'm considering that as option one. And then option two is LM1317 3.3 volt, a specific fixed voltage regulator. Again, linear voltage regulators. So that's why we are selecting second one as 1317. And then third one is MCP1826. Fourth one is BA033CC0T, which is a kind of an industrial grade, very heavy duty uh, linear voltage regulator IC. If I do a screening and scoring for all of these four options with respect to these features, you will get to know what exactly uh, specific part to be selected for our current project. Now we need a one ampere of output current. That's why uh, we have a 1.5 ampere here in LM317. That's why I'm giving a five out of five here. And then uh, input voltage range is 8 volt is a minimum and 40 volt is a maximum. Because it is capable of handling up to 40 volt, I'm giving a 4 uh, number or a 4 rating out of 5. 
wherein the A told input is something not so good for me, but still I'm considering. Why? Because we have an input power supply as a 12 volt and we want a 3.3 volt at the output side. Dropout voltage is a 3 volt and uh, design complexity is high. That's why both are not so good compared to other, other things. That's why we are giving a 1 out of 5 to them. Then lastly, the price one, the cost wise, it is 35 rupees. I'm giving a 3 out of 5. Why? Because others are, you know, the second one is much better. That's why 3 and uh, the compare to the third option and the fourth option, this is much more better. That's why it is 3. So if I add all these uh, scores, the ultimate score that uh, visible to us is 14. Now we'll do it same for the LM3117 3.3 volt regulator. You can see 950 milliampere. In fact, it is a uh, maximum current is 1.3 ampere, but 950 milliampere is a typical one. That's why I have given a 4 to it. 5 volt to do 15 volt, and just exactly what we needed. Uh, that's why it is a 5 out of 5. And the dropout voltage is 1.2 volt, absolutely good one, but still, there is a possibility to use a 0.25 volt and a 0.5 volt. That's why I'm giving 4 to it. Design wise, it is absolutely simple. That's why 5. And cost wise, compared to all other three, it is the lowest one. That's why five. So if I add all of these things, then we have a 23 as a total score. Then I'll repeat the same process for the MCP and also BA0. You can see that total score for MCP is a 14 and total score for this fourth option is 18. When I look at the total score for all the four options, we know that 23 is a winning, which is option two. That's why we are going to select a LM1117 3.3 volt a linear voltage regulator for our design today. However, how did I arrive at these points? Of course, I'm using a data sheet analysis. You can see here, this is the LD1117 series data sheet because we have a multiple options in the same regulator IC number. That's why it is a series. And it is claimed to be a low dropout fixed and adjustable positive voltage regulator. We are using only fixed one. Adjustable is not required for us. Low dropout, why? Because it has a typical of one volt dropout, which is very best compared to the LM317. Output current is up to 800 milliampere as they are mentioning their description section or the feature section. But if you go to the maximum current section, you will get to know it is up to 1.3 ampere. Like this, if I scroll down a little bit, we can see that it is available in SMD version as well and the through hole version as well. And if I go here in a through hole version, uh, the ordering part number is LD1117 V33, which is for 3.3 volt output voltage. Also, we have one more, which is V33C section. Uh, both are absolutely same, nothing difference. Only there is, there is a temperature difference indicating C here. Okay, if I scroll down, you can see input voltage is 15 volt maximum. That is what I written in the morphological chart. And if you see the uh, for fixed output voltage circuit, this is how the circuit is all about. So simple, adding an input capacitor and output capacitor and you are done. That's why I have given five out of five for the simple design complexity. Okay, and then uh, if you look at this uh, table, uh, electrical characteristic table for each and every fixed voltage regulator, this one is LD1117 for 1.2 volt. That's why it is named as hash 1.2 here. And if I scroll down, we will search for 3.3 volt. Here we have a 3.3 volt. Electrical characteristic for LD1117 3.3 volt regulator. The output voltage ranges from 3.26 volt to 3.33 volt, which is 3.3 typically uh, with all the matched conditions. And output current is, you can see here, 800 milliampere is a minimum one. Typically, it is 950 milliampere and maximum is 1.3 ampere or 1300 milliampere, right? And dropout voltage is somewhere around 1.1 volt to 1.2 volt. That's why it is so called a low dropout voltage regulator. If you scroll a little bit down and if you want to check about the mechanical data and other information, of course, you can do that. But right now, I'll not uh, scroll up further and I'll, I'll not go into the detail of this one. Just to give you a glimpse that how exactly we arrived at this option and how exactly I have filled this information, I have showed you a data sheet of one particular IC. But for other two or three ICs, you have to do the same process so that you can fill the entire morphological chart and come up with the idea how exactly we selected a specific option. Now, after this, what we need to do is we need to write a white box analysis. Input we are get, getting from the adapter. That's why we are going to use a DC barrel jack. And then we are going to use an input capacitor of 100 microfarad 25 volt. Again, the calculation of these capacitors is given in my basics of electrical circuits or basics of electronics tutorial. You can learn from that. 
and then LM triple one seven three point three volt linear voltage regulator is what we selected according to our white uh, the black box analysis and the morphological chart. We are going to put that in our white box analysis. Thereafter, we have a ten microfarad ten volt capacitor as an output capacitor, which is again based on three point three volt. Double of three point three volt is six point six volt which is not a common voltage in the market that's why we can use 6.3 volt capacitor or best one is a 10 volt capacitor on a safer side right and then we are using a t block connector a terminal block at the output of a 5 ampere so that we can access the 1 ampere from the regulator very easily 5 mm red led for uh, output indication again the white box analysis is essential to start a schematic design as we already know and then it includes the manufacturing part number that's what i mentioned lm triple one seven three point three volt is a manufacturing part number components calculation to be done at this stage the 10 microfarad and 100 microfarad calculation has to be done at this particular point of time only even though uh, the 5 mm red led will be having one resistor here the resistance value has to be calculated at this point of time and then this analysis helps us to create a circuit diagram in eda tool Whatever EDA tool you are using, you should go through the product development cycle in electronic industry. White box analysis is completed. Now let's jump into the easy EDA tool and start with a designing a schematic. All right, now here we are on easy EDA tool. Log into this particular easy EDA tool with your account as we already know that. And then a previous project is visible to you. Keep it there only so that you can understand how many projects you have completed. And then next one is the starting a new project. Go to file, click on the new and new project. Keep your repository, your folder as your name only. And then title for this one is plus 3.3 volt DC power supply. Okay, I'm using a space this time. It is better to use underscore rather than using a space. So let me change them to this one. And in description, what I'm going to give is 12 volt plus 12 volt DC to plus 3.3 volt DC uh, power supply design using easy EDA tool, of course. This is my description. And then now we'll click on the save option. A new window will appear to you, a schematic sheet. Now we will start with the designing. As always, let's fast forward this one for your ease of understanding. Alright, 
now you can see that the schematic design is completed for our 3.3 volt DC power supply. This is exactly similar or almost same like our 7805 circuit. Why? Because a 5 volt DC power supply uses the same regulator kind of a thing. And, and this one also uses the same thing. Uh, other than uh, regulator, everything remains same. But only thing is the footprint of this regulator is not a through hole technology, which is TO220 package. It is SOT223. Now we are going to check the footprint for all the component and verify them. First thing first, I will click on any component and check on the uh, footprint section. And this window will pop up to us. First thing, our 100 microfarad is a through hole one and 10 microfarad is a through hole one. DC jack is a through hole one. LED is also through hole one. Connector is through hole. Resistance is through hole. Only thing is this uh, regulator IC is not a through hole one. How to change the footprint? Of course, I'll go here and search for the TO220 package. So let's say TO220. We have our own designed TO220. I think I'm going to use this one. And then the tab part, I will leave it apart. I think we do not need to worry about the tab part at this point of time. Let's see if any error pops up if I go from schematic to layout. So I'll go to the design section, convert schematic to PCB. Yes, it says some problem is there. So what we are going to do is we are going to change this one to three and update the footprint once again. And then save it again go back to the design and click on the convert schematic to PCB. Now it is straightforward. Now we'll again go back to our process. Let's start with that, designing the PCBs. All right, you can see that this is how the entire PCB designing is look like. Now we can see that this particular component is placed downward this time. In last time I have placed it on the top side, but this time I'm placing it on the downward. 
the only important thing is you must remember whenever you are having a heat radiating component in your pcb make sure that the heat sink is on the border side it doesn't matter whether you place it on the bottom side or maybe the you no know, the lower end side or the upper end side or the uh, edges on the other side left side or right side top side bottom side wherever you place it doesn't matter but make sure that the heat sink should be facing on the outward of the pcb so that heat will be radiated outside the pcb not inside the pcb this is the most important thing of this tutorial that's why i have you know purposefully created this pcb with with uh, placing the component of heat radiating regulator on the bottom side or maybe you can say a uh, bottom side of the entire pcb looking right now okay so uh, other than that designators i have organized properly and again the 3.3 volt and ground we have implemented or created on the output connector side so that you never mess up with uh, connecting them in a wrong way and then we have added our text information with a hashtag linked frequency this is how the entire pcb is created and thereafter now the entire standard method of exporting this pcb is all about going to the file and exporting as a pdf so if i want a pdf then make sure that you all check these uh, radio buttons here and then a bottom layer a top layer all the layers has to be checked if you want a full graphic video then make sure it is a full color it is not for a toner transfer method it is for documentation purpose if i say export then i will say pcb underscore 3v3 dot pdf okay so we'll show you how exactly it looks like this is how it looks like in a pdf format right if if you want anything for a documentation purpose then this is how you have to export it if you want a toner transfer file then obviously go to the file export pdf only check the bottom layer uncheck all other things other than board outline multi-layer and hole make sure that black on white radio button is checked merge layer full graphics local pdf format then click on export here you can write a pcb um, maybe a toner transfer method ttm is a toner transfer method dot pdf okay so you can see here the ttm this is how the entire pcb looks like for a toner transfer method and then we'll go to the exporting the gerber file for a full-fledged industrial manufacturing click on the pcb gerber file check for the drc if nothing wrong then obviously the pop-up window will appear click on the generate gerber and you can save that particular gerber file gerber underscore pcb dot zip okay so we'll save it as a zip file and you can see here all the gerber files are visible to you and uh, what we can do is we can go back to the schematic and then generate the bill of material export um, no export bom and you can see this is how the BOM looks like. If I click on export BOM, it'll ask for the all attributes that you want and click on export. Here you can save uh, DC power supply. Let me keep it power supply only. And then CSP has to be added extension. If you are using a local client version, if you are using a desktop version, then you have to, uh, if you are using a web version, then no need to add extension, okay? So this is how the entire circuit design for 3.3 volt DC power supply looks like from the 12 volt DC adapter to a 3.3 volt conversion PCB. A 2D and 3D images are one added information that you have to know when, when you are designing a PCB. If you click on the 2D view option here, this is how the PCB looks like. You can see on the bottom side as well and on the top side as well. If you want to change the color of the PCB for uh, look and feel uh, inspection, then obviously uh, you can do that as well, okay? And this is all about 2D view. If I go back to the PCB layout section and click on the 3D view, this is what you can see. This is amazing 3D view is visible to you. Here you can change the background color to black color and a board outline or board color to the green color and the gold plating to the silver plating. If you want, if you want to remove the 3D models, you can remove that. This is how exactly the PCBs uh, look like after fabrication. Okay, so. This is, this is all about the designing the 12 volt DC into a 3.3 volt DC power supply. I hope you enjoyed and understood the entire process of converting your idea of a 12 volt DC into a 3.3 volt DC power supply. And also I believe that you learned the procedure of creating a product using an easy EDA file or easy EDA tool for designing a PCBs. Okay. Thank you for watching. Share this video with your fellow colleague or the one who is learning PCB designing and they will enjoy the process of learning the PCB by doing the projects like this.
Thank you so much for watching. See you again in the next video. Until then, tune yourself to make a difference.